Hey everyone, Cast back here with you. Uh, as everybody may have seen in my previous videos, I just got a 159 Extended Pro Master uh, 2018 model. I just um, getting ready to install the hitch so I can take my motorcycle with me on my van life tour. Um, and I want to show you that process. So here with that, I'll show you what the hitch looks like. So here is the hitch itself. It is designed for a 159 regular, uh, not the extended model, which as you can see, I have the extended model. Um, so I will show you what it takes to install that on this van. Uh, Alright, so the first step in the process here is going to be to open the door. And right here, you'll be able to see You'll be able to see there are several T30 bolts. There's four of them that are spread across the back of the van. As you can see, I've already kind of got the van loaded up with stuff um, in the process of selling my house. And it's just some stuff that's going to be going into storage. So we'll remove those bolts. There are also more of those bolts down below. There's so four more of those bolts down below. At that point, the bumper comes off. So the next step in the process is going to be to remove these bolts here. There's four of them in total. You may notice my van already has a hitch on it. This is one that's actually connected to the unibody. It's a U-Haul hitch. It was on here when I bought it. Um, but it disconnects to the unibody, which isn't going to work for my setup due to the fact that I'm going to be hauling a motorcycle uh, on the back of this using a trailer mount hitch. Um, if, I, if I were to use this hitch, it'll end up breaking the unibody out because it's only rated for 500 pounds, whereas the new hitch is going to mount directly to the frame rails, which is going to result in a 750 pound rating. Um, to allow for the bike to, to connect without actually breaking out the unibody. So, we'll remove those bolts now. And it is a half inch socket. Two down, two over here to go. And you'll notice there's already uh, wiring ran for the, the hitch that was there. Um, you may not see this in your van. It just depends on, on what you have. Mine is ran due to the hitch. It's already been installed. Let's move you back here so you can kind of see everything. Okay. There are also two bolts that are underneath coming in from the back side into the bumper which has a welded net on it. So we'll get those off. They're on each side here. And they're bigger than half inch. So let me get the right size.
They are five eighths. Oh, we'll take them off. Before we break this all the way off, we're gonna put two nuts back in there, two bolts back in the top side, just so it doesn't fall on me when I'm laying under there. Those just need to be fingered. Those just need to be finger snug. They don't need to be tight. Just enough so it doesn't fall on you. One down, one to go. Okay, let's take out the two support bolts and see what happens. Actually, I'm going to grab some jack stands. So here we have the jack stands to uh, kind of help support this. This doesn't fall right on me. break this wiring loose which like I said you may or may not have this is because of me having the other U-Haul hitch I 
there we go. There's the hitch removed. And like I said, this is the U-Haul hitch that uh, the previous owner installed on this, but it won't work for my needs. So here's what yours should look like after the fact, after you get everything removed. So now, let's figure out what we need to do to bolt up the other hitch. Here's the bag of parts. Just so you have an idea of what you're getting, here are all the parts laid out. Oh, nice keys here. So we're getting two of these, four of these, two cables to help you pull it in with, two big washers, three different sets of two bolts, four nuts, and six six of these washers. So we're going to lay it out and see what it looks like. With this new frame here, it's going to actually mount underneath here. Let's see if you can see it. There you go. So it's actually going to mount up to the frame here. So let me get it all set up and I will show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so the next step is to remove the spare tire. And that is done by loosening that right there, which lowers it down on a cable. So to do this, You walk, you walk around here to the front of the truck and grab your spare tire kit or your jack kit or whatever. The way it's done is you just twist this little knob here and it slides right out. So let's walk back here. So inside this kit, sit down here. Inside this kit, you have your spare tire kit. What you're going to need is this little black rod, which this piece right here, and this this piece right here is what goes in and lowers the, that nut. You take this piece and you grab this other big one here. This end is going to go inside of here. And you pull this out. And this makes your handle. So I'll show you how it's done. Well, that's 
spare tires out. Next step, just need to remove these rubber grommets right here. And they just, they pop out. Pretty simple. And there's also a few more of those rubber grommets. Let's see here. Right here. There's one here. Again, I just pop right out, and there's one on the other side that you'll have to take out as well. And that's due to, we're going to be putting bolts in there. Alright everybody, we're back. Uh, as you can see, it's a little later in the day, and that's because for the 159 extended, if you look at the bracket here, you can see I had to drill a second secondary hole. And you can see I had a mistake there, so I will get the measurements and provide you how far back it needed to be for this. Um, but for the 159 extended to make this bracket work, you had to drill a secondary hole. So I'm just finishing up the holes now, and then I will show you how to uh, mount it in a few minutes. Uh, the delay was because I had to go get a bigger drill bit for my um, cordless drill. I don't have a corded drill. Um, so I had to go get, uh, I'll show it to you. I got this, get over here the light. So I got the, the step drill bit here from Milwaukee. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, does amazing things for this. I just didn't have one before, so I had to go pick one up and that's why it's so much later in the day. I'll finish the holes and I'll get back with you here in a second. Swivel seat for the passenger seat. Alright everybody, so the next step that I have here is I've put it on jack stands and kind of a five gallon bucket I have sitting here in the garage to kind of get everything lined up. 
So, the crawl under here. You can see right there is where you need to put these brackets inside the frame and the bolt is going to go up through that hole we drilled into the nut that's welded onto these and these will be able to stay in there and work because the frame will keep it from twisting on you because it'll twist and catch on this and lock. The other step is taking and installing bolts down through in the bolt will go into this hole here and it'll have one of the big square nuts so it'll actually sit it's a carriage bolt so it'll sit in like this and the reason this works is because again it is a carriage bolt so it has a square on the top there and there's a square on this so when you start spinning the nut around it will not allow the bolt to spin and then the final bolts are going to be right here in the back. And the way these are done is, is like this. You can see I've already put one in. And it's got the wire on it. So the way we set those up, let me set the camera down here and I'll show you how those are set up. All right, everybody. So the way those are set up to go into the frame is you take your carriage bolt, the small, the smaller carriage bolt that they give you. You take the metal piece and it's going to go inside like this when it's done. And then the way you can put it in the back there so you'll be able to hold on to the bolt because it's again it's inside the frame you can't actually reach in there the bolt head is going to go inside of the frame so the way you do this is you take and run it through the plate like it's going to be installed and you're going to take the little metal uh, wire with the screw end on it uh, i guess not screw in this spring looking in and you're going to screw that right onto the bolt itself From there, you're going to take Let me see if I can do this one handed here. You're going to take the bolt and put the bolt inside with the wire hanging out so you can keep a hold of the wire. You're going to take the metal plate and put it inside. And again, it's you didn't notice the metal plate has the wire through it and then the bolt feeds back through. So this makes it so that you have a hold of the bolt and hold of the plate all in one. And once you're ready for these, these will be the last ones we'll put on. These will be able to be be there where we can grab them. So it's just a quick easy way to keep a hold of the bolts. You're going to do the same concept with the other set of wires that they provide which are here with the bigger set of carriage bolts the same same setup and those are the ones again that are going to go down below underneath here in the in the very back side of the van again in the front side it's going to be the hex head bolts with that that uh the hex head bolts with this piece Oh, we're going to work to install this. I'll try and set the camera up the best we can so you can see it. Alright. <clears throat> oh, let's see what we can do. Don't forget you're going to be using washers on all these. So, um, as I put them on, I'll show you which washers we're going to be, we're going to be using. It's going to go in just like that. You'll notice it just barely hangs over on one side there. Alright, so 
be careful. This thing moves quite a bit. This nut that's in there, I just lost it down the way um, and had to fish it back out. So just pay attention to that when you're in the process of installing these. The other thing is make sure you're wearing safety glasses. It's pretty dirty under here. Uh, I just got some dirt in my eye. So I went and grabbed my safety glasses and put them on. Well. There we got the first bolt in. It is a little tricky, I will say. Um, so just do the best you can. So just, just get it finger tight at this point because you need to put all your other bolts in before you tighten everything down. Otherwise you will be fighting yourself the entire way. So we're gonna move to the other side and do the same thing on the other side. So again, just finger tight until we get the other parts installed as well. Okay, to the next step, you're gonna need this big boy, which is gonna be a spacer for us. You need one nut, a washer, your bigger carriage bolts, the square piece, to hold your carriage bolt and then the, the little wire thread that I was talking about earlier. I'll show you in just a second how that's going up there. So again, red, thread the wire on the carriage bolt. Same concept as before, just this time we're going up from below. So, you're going to push the bolt up first. It's going to be a little tight just because of the fact that we've already put the big bolts in the back. So push the bolt up and now you're going to push the metal piece in. So it goes in, goes in that way and then you want to kind of twist it around to get the most surface area onto your frame just to because it's going to help hold hold it together so then you're going to go through your spacer your spacer is due to the the tow hook on the other side or i wouldn't call it it's it, it's it's a it's a tow hook but it's i wouldn't i would not tow the vehicle by it. pull backwards by it anyway use the spacer run the wire through the spacer Pull your, pull your carriage bolt down through. It's gonna take a little little wiggle in there, but just make sure it gets fed down in. You should be able, you might be able to see it right here that the the square of the carriage bolt gets down into the square of the big square type washer. So then through through the spacer. We're gonna run now the cable the wire through the hitch bracket and pull it all together. And then you're gonna need your washer and your nut. 
fun part. You're by yourself, the jack stands up. Because you can use the jack stand to hold up the hitch. Use the cap. Force it up in place. And, and screw the wire back off. Make sure not to hit yourself in the face. But if you're wearing your safety glasses, you should be protecting your eyes. So, take your washer, your washer goes on. And just hope you have just enough threads there to get yourself started. And that's all you need. Just enough to get it started for now. Because we're going to come back and tighten everything up when we're done. I don't want to tighten it up now, otherwise we, again, make the process hard for ourselves later on. So, I'm going to go do the other side. All right, everybody. It looks like uh, during that last step, my uh, my camera died. Oh, well, I ended up needing two people to uh, to help. Or I, had, I had to use another person to help me get it up. They had to lift right here. Uh, my my jack stands just weren't weren't cutting it for me. I probably could have went and grabbed my my jack to to put a little pressure here. Uh, the nut was just just wasn't enough getting enough threads off the bolt there um, due to so much pressure. So anyway, now for the final step, since we already threaded these two bolts are already inside the frame here, we did that earlier, now you just need to feed the wire, because it's a little tight now, feed the wire that you have through the holes and pull the bolt out. So do that on both sides. So, you're ready to put those bolts on the back there. So, you need the washer and the bolt. You got unthread. Just curious. So, you gotta unthread the wire. Or just pull it off. The last one to deal with. And just make sure you do not lose that bolt because you have to take everything back apart. Yep. So, you put the washer over and start threading that bolt on. There you go, one side done. Now, to the other side. And just pull the wire off just unscrew or you can just pull it off the way I did on the other one. Keep a hold of that bolt. Put the washer over it. And put the nut on. And there we go. Now all we have to do is tighten everything down. So I'll tighten it down and we'll uh, We'll move to the next step of putting the bumper back on. Alright everybody, the bolts are tight. Now it's time to put the actual bumper back on. So, it goes back on the same way you took it off. It's going to slide, slide it in there. You've got bolts here and bolts on the bottom. So, you should have your, uh, have your two nuts. Laying around your 5 8 socket. Go under and put those two on first. There 
and one thing I thought I could do was use a socket. Uh, I am sadly mistaken. Uh, I will have to use a crescent wrench due to the fact that the new hitch is now mounted um, right where those uh, these two nuts go. So you can screw them on, you just can't put a socket on it, there's not enough room. So, not a big deal. We'll just uh, We'll just tighten everything else down, and then we'll come back with a crescent wrench and uh, tighten those down. I'm just going to get them on here real quick, finger tight, just so, uh, just so they're in line. Come on. Oh. Have those on there. You can take, put the ones in the top. Back in. Tighten down with my fingers first. Alright, we're going to tighten it now. Right there. So the next step I'm gonna do is take the trailer mount, the trailer plugs that were on the U-Haul hitch. I'm gonna attach them to my hitch so I have lights. Just two screws, nothing fancy. All right, final step here: taking and putting your bumper back on. So. Slides it back over the top here. And if you remember from before, it's just uh, these T30 little bolts that go in it. Or I think they're T30. Uh, the torque head. Uh, they just screw back in. That's it guys, that's everything. Uh, it's back together with the new hitch. Um, I'll show you what it looks like once I get the motorcycle on there. But pretty straightforward install, a little modification like we said, um, because they don't make a, a, a hitch like this for the 159 extended. But you can take one uh, 159 hitch and install it and just a little modification. So like I said, with the, the screw, the, the drilling a hole through the metal. Um, and it works just fine. Still has the same weight ratio because you are still attaching to the, uh, the the frame underneath instead of just straight to the unibody that is um, the U like the way the U-Haul hitch was installed. So, uh, comment like below. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I will do my best to assist. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.